This video has been brought to you by Magic Dock. Magic Dock is the world's first desktop docking station built just for the iPad Pro. You can simply attach and detach your iPad using this built-in magnet, rotate the iPad 90 degrees from landscape to portrait and vice versa, and you can seamlessly adjust the height and angle of the iPad to suit the work you're doing. This is an insanely cool product and their Kickstarter campaign is live now. I can honestly see this being really useful if you have iPad OS, mouse support, the Apple Pencil going, on i mean this is honestly the macbook killer one accessory one macbook killer so if you guys are interested in it i'll link down below their kickstarter campaign go check it out go support them once again it's pretty awesome now let's start the video what's going on guys so today we're going to be comparing the macbook pro versus the ipad pro you guys always ask me should i get a macbook or should i get an ipad it's always so hard to answer that question because i don't know what you do i don't know if you're a student i don't know if you work I have no idea what you do. So today I wanted to compare these two devices from a student's perspective. I personally had an iPad Pro since 2016 and a MacBook. I can't honestly remember when I first got a MacBook, but it's been a pretty long time and I've been a student this whole time. So I can confidently say the good stuff about this guy, the good stuff about this guy, the bad stuff about this guy, and the bad stuff about this guy because they're both really amazing devices but there's some good aspects to between both of them. So hopefully today I'll have, I'll make you have a good idea between both of the devices. All right, so let me tell you straight off. Should you buy a MacBook or an iPad if you're a student? I'm gonna say this. If you study film, if you study graphic design, or if you are studying to be a musician, I'm gonna say you should get a MacBook. Now you guys, all the iPad fans are probably like, how dare you? I'm an iPad fan too. And it hurts me to say this. It hurts me to tell you that the MacBook is better if you're going to college, if you're going in for video editing, anything really film related, graphic design, or if you're a musician. And I'm telling you this from my personal experience because I'm not saying that the iPad cannot graphic design. I'm not saying that the iPad cannot video edit, but what I am saying is whenever you're going into college, whenever you're taking your iPad to college, whenever you're taking a Photoshop class, for example, whenever you're taking a uh, Final Cut Pro, whenever you're taking an Adobe Premiere class, your teacher's not gonna show you how to use Photoshop on the iPad. And that's one of the things that I haven't really heard any tech YouTubers talk about, just pure experience. And this is something that has happened to me. I got the iPad and I'm like, I'm excited to start out this year with college. I'm gonna learn so much, I love my iPad. But then in real to life scenario, I was like, I need a MacBook. I need a MacBook for these programs because my teachers are explaining me stuff that I can't personally use. This doesn't mean that you can't graphic design on the iPad. You totally can. And I graphic design a bunch on my iPad. But once again, the teacher will simply show you how to use programs on a MacBook. I guess teachers are old fashioned, whatever it is, but that's the truth, the hard truth. So other than that, if you literally study anything else, even high school, middle school, I would definitely recommend an iPad Pro. If you're going into college for chemistry, biology, architecture, business, law, marketing, mathematics, medicine, so on, I would definitely go an iPad Pro because it's simply ideal. The iPad is so much better than a MacBook, but sometimes, and it's so much more fun than using a MacBook, but sometimes, once again, if you're studying graphic design, you're simply not going to be able to use an iPad because your teacher won't let you. They will just, just, just won't teach it. And it's frustrating. Teachers, if you're watching this, professors, start teaching how to use programs on the iPad because it's the future. The iPad is the future of computing. And I love my iPad more than my MacBook. Don't tell my MacBook though. Now, why is the iPad better than the MacBook? And this is just my honest opinion. You came here to, to listen to my opinion if you don't agree with it. You can dislike this video, I don't care. By the way, if you guys are enjoying this video, drop a like. It really helps out my channel reach out to more people. So the iPad Pro is a way much better device than a MacBook for a couple reasons. For example, in my backpack, in school, in college, I had so much stuff. I had my notebook, my agenda, I had my pencils, my markers, uh, my a bunch of stuff for illustration. I had so much stuff. Books, with the iPad, you're only going to bring one device. With the MacBook, 
you could still technically have everything in one device, but it's not as intuitive in the iPad. Let me explain. For example, the iPad has all my notes and with the Apple Pencil, I'll talk about the Apple Pencil in just a second, but it's just an amazing experience. The Apple Pencil is not only for artists. I think it's personally designed for artists and for students. I mean, I can't believe my college life without my Apple Pencil. It, it's, it's amazing. Also, it's got all of my books everything and for you high school people or for people who are studying in college for like actual non-graphic design stuff you can have all your textbooks on your ipad you can highlight stuff with your apple pencil so that's a big thing right there the ipad is more portable but my ipad is really my macbook is really light i can use my macbook wherever i want it's so portable sure I guess the MacBook is portable as well, but it's not as portable as the iPad. The iPad, let's not forget that even though it's trying to be a computer, it's a tablet. And a tablet is really comfortable. And the good thing about the iPad Pro is that you can actually plug in a keyboard. So then if you don't want to stop using the keyboard, you can take it out. And then if you want to start writing again, you can use the keyboard. So if you're on the couch studying for an exam, if you're in your bed, maybe studying, can do that. It's so much more comfortable to just study, for example, it's just one scenario than a MacBook. With a MacBook, you basically have to be sitting down on a desk, which is probably more responsible. But the iPad is more fun. See what I'm saying? One really big thing about the iPad that not a lot of people mention is this guy, the camera. The iPad has a camera and the MacBook doesn't. I mean, the MacBook has a FaceTime camera like this you can um, video conference and call people. But the iPad has two cameras. Now the front facing camera is the back camera, sorry, is the big deal. Now, who the heck takes photos on their iPads? Well, hopefully people don't really take photos on their iPads, but scanning documents, scanning your homework, scanning your assignments, scanning anything document student related is mind blowing to have on the iPad. And then you put that, you put the Apple Pencil, you annotate, you see where this is going again. You could technically take a photo with your iPhone of a document and then send it over to your MacBook. And then if you want to sign something, it's kind of more complicated to do on the computer. But this is what I'm saying on the iPad being a way much more better device than the MacBook student wise. One thing that the iPad Pro is not really good at, and I guess it's not the iPad, it's the keyboard or the viewing angles. With the MacBook, you can literally put all the viewing angles that you want because like this, it fits your need. With the iPad, you've only got two viewing angles, at least with this Apple Smart Keyboard. There's a bunch of other amazing keyboards out there, such as the Bridge Keyboard. So if you're not really a big fan of these two viewing angles, you're kind of doomed unless you buy another keyboard. But at least Apple's keyboard, you've only got two. I have to say, though, that the two viewing angles on this keyboard are more than enough for me. Yes, I do wish I'd have unlimited viewing angles like the MacBook. But the viewing angles that Apple has put into this keyboard are pretty perfect. I wish that there'd be more but the ones that there are are pretty good. All right, so now let's talk about iPadOS and more specifically iPadOS for students. I've already made two videos on iPadOS. I made my own iPadOS specific setup. It was amazing. The video almost got, I think it's, it's actually reached 100,000 views. Insanity, thank you so much for watching. I'll link it down below. Definitely watch that video and I've also did everything that's new in iPadOS. So now I wanted to touch on the most important things on iPadOS specifically for students because before, last year, I actually made a video comparing the iPad Pro versus the MacBook. And the iPad Pro lacked so many features that it just made me want to recommend you the MacBook, but the iPad is so much more fun. But now, with iPadOS coming later in September, the iPadOS can totally replace anybody's laptop. Anybody's. Literally anybody's. And it's so amazing what I'm doing with my iPad. I literally barely touch my MacBook anymore. Barely anything, unless it's for video editing. Yes, you can totally video edit on the iPad now, and I'll get into that in a second. Let's start off with Safari, because now with Safari, you have a desktop class browsing experience, which is huge if you're a student. I have so many friends that got an iPad for school, and then their teacher sent them like this online homework, and then they were like, why can't I load up this homework on Safari on the iPad? It won't work. It was because before Safari had a mobile version, but now with iPad OS, you literally have the Safari that you would find on the Mac, which is pretty amazing. So I'm so glad that that came to the iPad and it works so well. You also get a download manager. So if you have to download a file from Drive or from whatever website, that will work perfectly and you'll be able to download all your files straight 
on your iPad. Also, going back to the desktop class Safari, I have to mention that, for example, Google Docs was something that Google Docs Safari version, it never really worked. And it was always frustrating because I had my iPad, people were sharing documents in Google Docs and stuff, and they were writing the document. And I'm like, it won't really work really well. Like it was always super laggy, but now it works really well. The iPad with iPad OS now also has mouse support. And this is huge, huge, because now, with the MacBook, for example, you've got the only way that you can experience your um, MacBook is just with the trackpad and the keyboard. But now with the iPad, you've got the Apple Pencil, you've got touch because of course the iPad is touchscreen, you've got the keyboard and you've got mouse support. So you've got so many different ways that you can experience your iPad differently. On the Mac, it's just the trackpad, which works pretty well. I mean, perfectly. It's amazing. The trackpad is amazing. but. I mean, I'm used to this trackpad for all my life, so I, it's just kind of fun to just use a mouse and the pencil and the touchscreen on the iPad. It's just a um, way much more fun experience and a way much, I wouldn't say better because both of them are pretty the same, but what I like is, you know, the just the different ways that you can use the iPad. With the Mac, it's just always the same. With the iPad, it's more fun. One of the things that I didn't really like about the iPad before iPad OS was writing essays, for example, because dealing with text before iPad OS, before mouse support, was a pain in the butt because you literally had to go on the touchscreen because you know you had to perfectly select but now with the with the mouse it literally feels like a computer like selecting text selecting a word you got the cursor it's a way much better experience so writing essays i can confidently say with the ipad that you're gonna have a great experience like you would on a laptop all right now let's go back and talk about the apple pencil because the apple pencil once again is not only for artists it's also for students get that in your head because i can't believe I, the Apple Pencil has just saved my life in my college life. It's amazing. Whether you want to write notes, whether you're a student and you want to write notes and have all your notes in one device, whether you're grabbing a bunch of notebooks and a pencil. Welcome to the 21st century, baby. iPad Pro and Apple Pencil is literally the best experience in your life. And now with iPad OS, you can literally take a full page screenshot on a Safari website, for example, and can literally mark up the whole website we've also got a redesigned tool palette which you can move anywhere in the screen because before it was literally always in one place and it was often pretty disturbing now if it's disturbing you you can literally just swipe it up or swipe it to the right or swipe it to the left good stuff widgets on ipad are now in the home screen and it makes it really useful if you're a student because you can have your class calendar you can have all your homework that's something that i'm personally going to be using within this school year um, I, it's been always on the MacBook as well under notification and then on the, um, on the today tab, but since it's so hidden, I've personally never been a, been a big fan of widgets because they've always been hidden. Now with the iPad, they're right there, they're right on the home screen and it makes you simply want to use them more. So concluding my thoughts, um, and I'm sorry that I've been talking about the iPad so much in this video, but I personally think there's so much more to talk about on the iPad, especially with iPad OS than with the MacBook with Mac, well, Mac OS Catalina. Mac OS Catalina hasn't really introduced anything really revolutionary for students, so that's why I haven't really talked a lot about it. And you guys know everything about the Mac. It's perfect for everything. If you've just bought a MacBook, you're gonna love it. If you've bought an iPad, you're gonna love it. So don't be scared if I just said that the iPad is so much better than a MacBook, because the MacBook is amazing as well. I'm just letting you know, if you haven't bought any of these devices and you're in between both, in my opinion, in my experience, I definitely tell you to go with an iPad because it's so much more fun and you can do anything that your MacBook can. Also, your MacBook can do everything that the iPad can. So do you want a detachable screen? Do you want the Apple Pencil? Or are you okay with a trackpad with the touch bar? So yeah, these are my thoughts on both devices, having the experience that I've had as a student using both devices. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Of course, I want to know your thoughts down in the comment section down below. Let me know if you're a student. And if you're not, you're welcome to join the comment section. But I want it to be a student comment section today. So if you're a student, comment student down below or comment your experience with both devices. So do that and I will see you in the next one guys. Peace.